My name is Kat Davis and I'm 24 years old and I have systemic scleroderma. It's basically like you're living in a straitjacket 24-7. Now my mom has to help me shower and so once that process is done, which is a brutal process, it's rough getting wet because I have so many ulcers on my arm and my fingers and it just makes it very sensitive. And once I'm like showered and then it's time to get dressed and because I'm so tight I can't bend down to get dressed so she also helps me get dressed. Um, once that's all done, I normally need to like take a break because now I'm tired. But then after that, I can venture out for a couple hours. People are like, oh, you don't look sick and you're dressed cute and all that stuff. But I'm also like, I know that one day being able to do my hair will no longer be an option. So I'm going to take the, you know, the extra time and I'm going to do my hair. And I'm going to wear makeup and I want to look cute because I know one day that's not going to be an option. I don't want to take that for granted right now when I am still somewhat capable of doing it. Scleroderma is a really hard disease um, to understand. At first when Kat was diagnosed, I didn't know what it was. And since that time, I've done a lot of research. Scleroderma basically means hard skin. What happens is your body forms excess connective tissue, otherwise known as scar tissue. And it forms in different places across your body. And what that does is it makes that tissue, which was once soft, into hard tissue. It basically turns your skin into stone. And then in the case of Kat, she has what is referred to as systemic scleroderma, which not only affects her external skin, but it affects her internal organs as well. And over time, those organs will just cease to function. My skin is so hard that I've actually had doctors say that when they were trying to get a needle in my vein, that the needle actually bent. Um, so which is why I've had a power port in my chest for many years now. In May of 2010, she had a really bad finger ulcer. And so she went to a, a, doc, a surgeon to have it released or to have it cut off. And he could not find a vein. The doctor that she went to was a rheumatologist. And he said to her, well, you have, you know, rapidly advancing diffuse scleroderma. And you'll probably have, you know, a lifespan of two to five years. But... The good thing is you'll never have wrinkles. Yeah, I kid you not. Raynaud's is a lack of circulation in your fingers and your, and your feet. They're, because you don't have enough blood flow, you begin to form these, these ulcers. They, could, they go down and they can attach themselves to the bone. And if they do that and become infected, then you have to have it cut out. And the problem with cutting anything out is you already don't have circulation. So then they just keep cutting. And so if you look on the Scleroderma Foundation for pictures of people, you'll see them with fingers like this, you know, and, and all kinds of weird amputations having taken place, trying to catch up with the infection and, and heal the, the ulcer. So they're very dangerous and they're very painful. So we have to cover them with band-aids all the time. My mom is so amazing. I can't even imagine what I would do without her, especially with this journey. It's, it would be impossible to fight this fight without her by my side and to have someone that I can truly vent to and who really gets it and doesn't always try to help me she just listens and it's awesome and she's so great that we can just laugh all the time we just try to make it be as funny as possible or we'll just go insane and it's just awesome to have someone so strong on my side um, i think Kat's just a fun loving person who is uh very friendly who's always uh you know easy to make friends with and uh uh, I think she cares more about others than she does herself. 
I think just the way in general that people are, are drawn to her and her character. There's just something about her that that uh, is easy to get along with for people. And like in her set of friends, I mean, she has a wide variety of friends. I think she's just uh, just that kind of person. She's just so unlike anyone I've ever met. She's, she's the way that she relates to the world and to people and to, and to death and to pain is is so the things I've read about in the past. I've read about people like her, but I've never had the opportunity to be sitting across from a young person, from a young woman who is so incredibly selfless and so resilient and so courageous and so kind-hearted. And she's just pushed through this physical imperfection, this horrible time. And she's done it without complaint. I guess I'm just kind of still in denial about it because she's not... She's not gonna die. She can't die. She just can't, and it's just is. To think me personally, I'm still. I'm still in denial about it. Um, but she's she's a fighter. And every day, she wakes up and she still has so much joy and she's so fun to be around and. Our family get she like initiates all our family get togethers and I mean I don't I don't even know what it would be like without her. I can't even think about it. <laughs> the best hope for Cat at this point is a stem cell transplant, which we're very excited about. And what this process basically does is the doctors are going to harvest her healthy young baby cells and they freeze them. And then what they do is, for the next several weeks, Cal will actually undergo chemotherapy. So she'll lose her hair, they'll infuse her body with all sorts of chemicals, and she'll be very, very sick. And what they try to do during the chemotherapy process is to kill off any other diseased cells that are still in her body. And then what they do is they take the frozen baby cells and they transplant them back into Cat's body. And then from there, the hope is that these young baby cells will regenerate and produce healthy cells that are not diseased and that over time her body will then begin to be filled with healthy cells and non-diseased scleroderma cells. And at this point there's a great chance that if Cat has a transplant that this will work. And so we're very excited about the opportunity Cat has before us. Every day Cat's scleroderma worsens. Visibly her skin gets harder and harder so we know that inside her organs are hardening as well. Time is of the essence. Cat has exhausted all other medical avenues for help except for a stem cell transplant. That is her last hope. Her insurance has denied her that opportunity. We are now forced to raise $150,000 to cover the cost of the transplant. Please visit cureforcat.com to see how you might be able to help us achieve this goal. We need your help. Please consider helping her. I'm watching my daughter die before my very eyes. <laughs>